Hello and welcome back, or maybe just welcome for the first time. This is part three in a video series exploring how I made my game You Shall Not Pass set to release in March of this year. In parts one and two, I talked about how this game got started and what went into the process that led up to now. And in this part, I'll be talking about my plans moving forward on this project and potentially on others. As of this video, You Shall Not Pass is a game where you play as Shamandolf the Wizard and you herd your sheep through lands unknown, fighting off the enemies that prey on them with your magic spells. You rest at and manage your farm in between playthroughs before you do it all again. All in all, about 10 months have passed since I started this game, and about 8 months of that were uh, dedicated to the making of this game. So where are we now? Steam page? Created. Timeline? Resin day. Wallet? Zero bucks. Mental health? It's okay. It's not bad. It's not great. Overall, take that as you will. At this point in the game, the game has two major parts, farming and fighting. On the farming side of things, you have repairs to make at your farm, you have resources to collect, like eggs from your chickens, wool from your sheep, you have crops to grow at your garden, you have an orchard to repair and berry bushes and fish to catch. You can view your achievements and you can learn new magic spells at the marketplace. In the fighting half of the game, you herd your sheep from region to region, battling off the different enemies that try and eat them up. You collect power-ups through each playthrough that will change how you play the game. And you use those to venture out and defend your flock for as long as you can, hopefully making it to the end and defeating the final boss. You can find and rescue sheep eggs to grow your flock, you can fish at the odd reservoir, you can polymorph cockatrice into chickens for your farm, and you can test out new spells that you find along the way. You go back to your farm and you repeat. I really love this game that I've been working on, and I've been working really hard on it. There is so much that I want to add, some of which I'll get into, but I do have to manage and navigate that voice in my head that thinks the game will never be good enough and stops me from releasing it. Therefore, it is time to release my baby into the world. You Shall Not Pass is available to wishlist on Steam! Yeah! Ooh, woo! <laughs> I've picked an early access release date in mid to late March, and I'm making my very first YouTube devlog series ever. The video you're watching right now. That might have been unnecessary. Whatever. To hopefully connect with you guys and explain what it is that I'm making. I'm trying to figure out how to translate my games using a game I talked about in my last video called Autumn's Bounty that I released a few months ago to sort of learn all these lessons. And I'm trying to tie up some loose ends in development while also balancing a few unrelated or semi-related personal projects on the side. But if the game is releasing in March, what's going on until then? What's happening in January, February, and early March? Well, I'll tell you. If my mental health doesn't shit bad over the next few months, and I can manage to keep scraping by. One thing that I'm hoping to add to my development pipeline is game dev challenges. <laughs> what this means is I will try to develop some system or some new thing in a set amount of time, document some of the live process on Twitch, and then make a video about it to go on YouTube, hopefully every two weeks. In between those challenges, I will be doing maintenance on the game, hopefully get some good QA in, which is quality assurance, making sure there are no bugs and such, and continuing to learn how to do all of this, because as I've mentioned before, I have no background in the industry, I've never worked in the industry, I have no educational background in the industry, and I'm learning all of this on the fly. Back to you, Jonah. Thank you, Jonah. There are two challenges I'm hoping to partake in January. Number one, create a new region in just one week. What that means is creating a new enemy, creating a new tile map, creating a new soundtrack, maybe playing with a new play style if the region doesn't behave like the others do. I have no idea if I can get that done in a week, but I will definitely try. The second January challenge is to add as many power-ups as I can in one week. My goal is to add three a day. If I do it over five days, quick math. 15 power-ups, each would be unique and new and not in the game already, and I would hopefully document this process pretty actively on Twitch, and then make a video documenting that process for YouTube. 
January maintenance tentatively includes tweaking the way you accrue new sheep, exploring what it means to self-publish on a platform like Nintendo, especially since Unity changed their policy, not the one you're thinking about. They changed their policy a few years ago. You had to be paying for Unity Pro if you wanted to release your game on any consoles. And it's like over 2,000 bucks a year, and I've made like 150 bucks in my entire game dev career. So we'll see. In February, I'm hoping to pivot to farming challenges. The first challenge will be making, drum roll, brrr, sheep variants. I hope you like that. I am hoping to spend a week and each day make a new kind of sheep. What this means is that a sheep that would look different, a sheep that maybe plays different and behaves a little differently, maybe rare sheep that have powers that help you throughout the game. I don't really have variants in mind, so if you have an idea, drop a comment. The second challenge, and one that I am personally pretty excited about, is creating an interior for your home on the farm. So what this means would be making a tile map and some little furniture and maybe some little things to do in the house. Just like a cute little place that is yours and make the house a little bit more functional. This is the kind of work that I love doing as a developer, but alas, there is more to it than just that. There is busy work and, and maintenance. So February maintenance includes making some UIs to view all the different things you've done in the game so that the completionists can monitor their progress. You know, how many fish have I caught? How much wool have I collected? Have I planted all the seeds there are to plant? Et cetera, et cetera, and creating a new inventory system. Ooh. I've been trying to put off making an RPG inventory system, think Minecraft and Stardew, because I was hoping I would have a brain blast moment where I could invent some new, unique, game-changing inventory system. But nothing's really smacked me over the head yet with inspiration, so I think I'm just gonna go back to basics and make your know, standard RPG inventory system. In March, there will be no challenges. Instead, I will be spending most of that early month panicking about the upcoming release and spiraling into absolute insecurity and paranoia that will paralyze me with anxiety. Only half kidding. March will be panicking about the game, but then doing something about it. <laughs> My goal, make sure the game doesn't crash for you on launch, tie up loose ends, fix any straggling bugs, hopefully partner with some people to work on QA, asking friends, family, and any fans to play the game, make sure there isn't something huge that I'm just missing, and so that I don't release the game and then release 20 updates the same day that I release it to patch those tiny little things that I missed, which is what I did for Autumn's Bounty. Anyone that bought the game when I released it saw on the hour an update would come out that would just be like fixing the smallest little freaking thing. Ooh. So hoping to not do that, but we'll see. Now that I've said all this and I've put it on the internet, I'm hoping that will keep me accountable and keep me moving. Because keeping yourself accountable 24-7, that's hard work. It, it, like, I want to sleep in, I just sleep in, what the heck? But now that there are people watching, it's you. Hopefully, I can get everything that I've just said done. <gasps> that would be amazing. But, if I fumble down the line and I don't deliver what I've said I would like to, please don't yell at me. These are my quarter one goals. It's a goal. I will do my best to make it happen. But, in the words of Masha Masha Masha, if you come for me, I will apologize immediately, and I'm really sorry, but we'll see. It's up in the air. If you're curious about this game, you should go wishlist it. It's on Steam, and it helps me a lot, I think. I don't actually know, but if you're curious, check it out. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it'll be out and released and launched. You should get it. If you're interested in seeing how this game unfolds, or even having a hand in how it unfolds, you should totally leave a comment. I'm a, I'm a one-man show, which means I see your comments, I love your comments. A lot of this game's initial direction was because of comments people left on my Twitch stream. And even though I love making games, I am making games for you. I'm making games for people to play. And let me know where you're hoping to see this go, something you're excited about, something you're not excited about, because all of it is so, so helpful for me as a developer. Now, before we wrap up, I would like to talk about my future projects, my potential drafted, the stuff that I'm thinking about doing after this game is released and wrapped up a little bit. If the game does really well, you shall not pass. I might spend time rolling out updates and expanding it, but eventually I'll move on to something else. And at this moment, the beginning of 2024, these are the projects that I'm potentially exploring. Number one, Sewer Sewer. 
A few months ago, I developed a couch co-op game with a friend for a local Chicago game jam, where you play as rats under the oppressive rule of the Rat King, and you have to sew dresses for the princesses on the surface. It's a similar game to Overcooked, where customers line up, and there are different stations to make each order, and there's a time limit to get all those orders completed. It's chaotic, it's fun, it's multiplayer, it's a little dark, but whimsical. It's one of my favorite games that I've ever developed for a jam in a limited time scope. And I'd be really interested in chatting with the friend that helped develop it and see if he was interested in making the game a little bit bigger so that it could end up on a console platform like the Switch. Number two. No Can Do. No Can Do is the very first game that I ever started working on. It was the game that I started making to learn how to code. During the pandemic, I had played Stardew Valley and I was like, hmm, there are things that I might wanna change about this. I wonder how hard it is to make a game. And I just started doing tutorials and then it never stopped. And No Can Do was the project I was working on to like, teach myself about the industry, about game making, about all of it. It's a standard, you crash land on a planet and you have to survive their RPG. It has way more systems than you shall not pass. Under the hood, it's a much more robust game. It has a day-night cycle and weather systems, a dynamic environment, NPC dialogue systems, an inventory system, crafting systems, marketplaces, town management, relationship management, base building, etc, etc. But in 2022, I got overwhelmed with the scope of the project and so I put it on ice. I've recently had a burst of inspiration that has me really wanting to work on this game because I have an idea of how I can tweak and pivot it to be a much bigger, more robust game that I think would be an absolute delightful gaming experience. But it is not a game that I think I can work on alone. I would either need to find collaborators that admittedly I cannot pay, so that is kind of out of range at the moment, or I have this version of this game that's pretty close to a demo of this new idea that I want. I would maybe be interested in tweaking it to more align with the idea that I have and uh, looking to publishers, see if anyone might be interested, which is a process I did for You Shall Not Pass. No one bit, no biggie, but I'd love to go for round two. Option number three some unnamed project. If someone were to approach me with a cool game and a team that I could get excited about, I would be inclined to join that team. I am so hungry for knowledge right now and, and collaboration, but that ultimately does line up with what I'm looking for. And if it were a paid gig, I'm not in the best financial place, so that would be a lot of incentive to jump on board. I'm in talk with some local friends about potential projects, and there are some other non-game related projects in the works that could take me to interesting places, so... Option three is really, it's kind of up in the air. So that is it for my potential future projects and my quarter one plans for You Shall Not Pass. If you are thinking of making a game, I highly encourage you to do it. I learned everything, everything, on YouTube and on Unity forums. I recommend finding people that support you and inspire you. It won't always be easy, but you will 100% regret not doing something you liked when you had the chance. If you liked this video, leave a like and a comment. It really bolsters my will to live. That's it for this three part development series on how I made this game up to now, but you will see me again with updates on this projects and hopefully projects in the future. Happy gaming.